How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be working on an 18 horsepower Kohler Courage that has an intake valve leak. Now I've worked on this machine previously and unfortunately it's had quite a few issues over the years. So to get everyone caught up, my customer purchased this machine new in 2015 and used it for about a year until 2016. In 2016 they ended up hiring someone to come and do some yard maintenance so this machine ended up sitting until 2017. In the spring of 2017 they tried to start this engine and unfortunately the piston was seized in the cylinder. I ended up doing a video on how to unseize this engine, how to remove and reinstall the cylinder head, as well as how to properly lash the valves. Now fast forward to the summer of 2018, my customer called me and said that the machine was running pretty rough, so we ended up removing the EGR, that's the exhaust gas return that vents some of the exhaust fumes back into the carburetor, that really dirties up the carburetor and I don't really recommend running them. So we removed the EGR and I swapped out the emissions compliant Kohler carb and we installed another carburetor that didn't have any of that emissions stuff. Now if you have seen any of those videos I would highly recommend watching them just to get caught up first. I will link all of that later on in the video but as always you can check out the description and the comments down below for links to all the videos that I mentioned. So with that being said let's get right into it. Okay, so we're at top dead center on the compression stroke and I've marked it just with a marker here and I've taken the valve cover off. We can see that both valves are closed and that both rockers here are loose. I have my tube in here and I'm gonna pressurize it and if there's any air coming out of here, that means we have intake valve leak and if there's any air coming out of the muffler down here, that means we have an exhaust valve leak. The only air that should be coming out is back there at the oil tube. Essentially, if there's air coming out of there, and that means that pressure from my compressor going through my cylinder leak down tester is going into the cylinder, pressurizing the cylinder, and then escaping past the rings into the bottom end. Okay, so I have approximately 55 PSI going into the cylinder. It's holding at roughly 40 PSI. However, if we listen here, leaking air from the intake, which means that the intake valve isn't sealing. So now the head has to come off and I have to cut the valve seat and lap the intake valve. If I'm not hearing any air out of the intake or the exhaust, then that means we're 100% sealed up on the head. And then that means it's just a case of what the piston rings can hold. So we're just using some valve lapping compound here. This is just a compound that is gritty. And you guys can see there's a little bit of oil at the top here. So what you do is you have your special plunger here. And what we're doing is we're using that grittiness to basically sand down the area of contact. It's called the valve seat and then we're going to keep lapping it until it makes a nice tight seal. <laughs> To get a head gasket for this, you got to order the head kit. It's a 2841-01S, and that kit is about 45 bucks. Comes with brand new head bolts, comes with uh, exhaust gasket, intake gasket, comes with basically everything you need to take the head off and put it back together. What I can't understand is that this machine is only a couple years old. It's a 2015, and we're in 2018. And I've done quite a bit of work on this mower for this guy, and it's all been to the engine. This is unfortunately what you get when you buy a Kohler, guys he didn't know that when he was buying a Kubota, it came with a Kohler engine. And unfortunately, on a 2015 machine, you already have a case where it's leaking from the intake valve. So again, this is unfortunate that this problem happened and we could have never really known because this thing ran perfect. You guys saw in the video, I was driving it up and down the road. I went, cut my grass, cut my neighbor's grass. Thing ran fine, oil level was fine. There's what's called an automatic compression release on this, which is basically, there's a little counterweight on your cam gear and it just opens your exhaust valve ever so slightly on the compression stroke when the piston is about halfway in the cylinder. So again, once the piston gets up to top dead center, both valves are closed. Okay, so I just got my head kit in. There's your Kohler number as well. And I've lapped the intake valve. Now what I'm doing is taking some water and I'm actually filling up the intake port here. Now I have both my valves installed, but what this does is it puts water into the intake port. I'm holding the cylinder head here and we are leaking slowly. You guys can see it, it's beating out only at one spot there, but water's definitely dripping out.
Well, folks, I got my head back, the intake valve. We got a brand new one, you can see it there. The valve seat has been cut, and this new valve has been lapped, as far as I know. Now, just to explain the reasoning why I sent this head out and didn't do the work myself, problem was the valve seat cutting kit that I have. Unfortunately, the post that I have that positions the seat cutter is bigger than the valve guide in there. Now I could have punched out the valve guide and then used the post that I have to fit in there, but then I have to press the valve guide back in. So I chose not to do that. I figured I'd just send it out. And then what'll happen is if this doesn't seal up or I have an issue with my intake valve, all the liability essentially falls on them. I'm using this valve spring compressor tool here. It works awesome. It's got this lever here. You set your height and you just open the lever. It opens up, close the lever, it closes up nicely. It's got adjustable jaws down here so you can go over just about any size valve spring. Works awesome. Would highly recommend having one of those. Okay, I'm ready to put the head back onto the machine. I've just cleaned up the surface here, sprayed it down with a little bit of carb cleaner, wiped everything off, and I also have my engine set to top dead center on the compression stroke. Now, if you want to see me go through the head install process, then on the top right of your screen, you should see a pop-up. That'll take you to the previous video that I did where I had the head off and I was putting it back on. It'll take you through the torque spec process and the setting of the valve lash. Okay, so I have my OTC cylinder leakage tester here. Just over 70 PSI in the left gauge, which is from my compressor, and just around 70 PSI in my right gauge, which that goes down to the cylinder. And unfortunately, if you guys can hear this, we have quite a bit of air coming out of the intake side again, which unfortunately means that the valve job that another shop did doesn't work. So we sent this head out and they said it sealed up when they did the fluid test. When you do a cylinder leak down test, what you're doing is simulating the engine running. So when your piston comes up and around to the compression stroke, you're building significant pressure in that cylinder. We are 100% leaking from the intake side again. And again, when we come over to the exhaust side, we're not leaking at all. So unfortunately, this head is gonna have to come off once again. At this point, it's like this head has been off so many times. And just so you guys know that it's not the rocker pushing on the valve, there's actually clearance on that right there, you guys can see. In my line of business, guys, if something can go wrong, it most likely will. So like I said, at this point, it's all gotta come apart. Okay, so I'm not sure how good this is gonna come up, but you can definitely see there's a little water. Well, I finally got the cylinder head for this Kubota back and we sent it down to Precision Machine. You guys can see they've uh, greased up the valve. They cut the valve seat at 89 degrees and what that does is essentially gives you a 44 and a half degree angle on either side and the valve is cut at 45 degrees so on either side there's a difference of half a degree what that does is it gives you a one degree total difference and that is what is supposed to seal up your valve so i got a guarantee from precision auto that this thing will seal up 100 percent so i've got the kubota wheeled into my shop i've got the engine set to top dead center on the compression stroke and i'm going to get the head back on and then I'm gonna pressure test it. Okay, so I got my carburetor stud that was actually removed before we sent the head off to get machined. I now have a carburetor gasket installed. This is a tape-on version, but you'll notice that this piece here covers up a little bit. Well, inside of here, there is a plastic piece and that kind of diverts your intake air into the valve towards the combustion chamber. This little blockage here is meant to stop that stud there from uh, essentially falling out into the intake. So basically that just goes on like that. So I got everything set up for the head here and I'm just getting ready to install it. Okay, so again, got my head torqued up. I have my OTC cylinder leak down tester here. I got my compressor hooked up and this is the moment of truth. So you guys might be able to hear that. I'm just putting 40 PSI in and you can see that we have just under 40 PSI on the other side. So the air that's leaking here is not coming from the intake. So that's sealed up. So that means that it's coming through the cylinder past the piston rings, which it's supposed to a little bit. And if we pull this, it should get louder. Hear that? 
So that's it. So I'm extremely happy because this cylinder head is now sealed up and we're not losing more than 10%. It's actually a lot less than 10% through the piston rings, which means that the cylinder seals up nicely. The valves are sealing up nicely. Shout out to Precision Auto. You guys did awesome work. They even gave me a guarantee. They said this thing's guaranteed to seal up. So if I ever have a head that's giving me any troubles, 100%, I'm gonna send my stuff to them. Okay, so interesting little point that I wanted to make was because the intake valve was ground, that takes material off of over this side. And what that does is it will actually bring your valve back farther. And if your rocker arm here is at the same position that it was when the head was sent out, my tolerance was a lot tighter here. So what I'm doing now is just re-shimming the valves and this side is 5 thou, this side is 7 thou. You want more clearance on your exhaust side because heat makes things expand and it will actually expand the valve a little bit and it will tighten up that tolerance probably about 1 or 2 thou to bring it in line with the 5 thou over here. So again, just a little interesting point and I'm just doing that now. So I'm ready to put my overhead valve cover onto this machine with my new cork gasket that I'm going to be installing. So I got a scrape the old gasket out of there you guys can see this is just my box of parts and again you know having things in bags I know that carburetor is perfectly clean carb parts exhaust bolts we have left hand shroud we have right hand shroud everything's nice and organized and that's how you want it to be now a little piece of advice that I'll give you before you go ahead and put your overhead valve cover with your new gasket on Go ahead and turn your flywheel around. You can remove your spark plug to make it easier, but essentially what you wanna do is give the engine a full revolution, watch your valves go up and down, make sure that your rocker arms are moving as they should, make sure that your push rods are moving as they should, and that there's no binding. You wanna do this to ensure that when you do go ahead and start your engine, that there's no issues. So I've turned the engine over, the valves move up and down properly, and I'm ready to put my cover back on. Okay, so the head is pretty much done. The only thing I have to do now is install the carburetor. But what I want to talk about now is there's no oil in the machine. I had to drain it out because my customer was experiencing fuel in the bottom end. So it was diluting the engine oil and he had a lot more than what was supposed to be in there. We figured that either it was coming past the rings in the piston, which we know that it isn't because we did a leak down test. But when the intake valve was leaking, we thought maybe the fuel is going into the intake, getting into the head and then recirculating through the oil ports back into the bottom end. But if you get a pinhole in your fuel pump here, then fuel will come through your diaphragm and it will go down this tube, which leads to your crankcase. So the way that this fuel pump here works is essentially just off of crankcase pressure. So the crankcase pressure pulls on a diaphragm here, which then circulates fuel from your fuel tank here down into your carburetor. But if there's a small pinhole inside of that diaphragm in there, it will actually suck some of that fuel into your bottom end crankcase, thus diluting your oil. And my customer has already had enough troubles with this machine, so I'll end up giving it to him at cost. Whether that was the issue causing the fuel to go into the bottom end or not, basically it doesn't even matter. I'll just replace it anyways. So out with the old, in with the new. This one has the screws on it because it's an aftermarket pump, so it's saving my customer a little bit of money. And like I said, I'm just gonna give this one to him at cost. If he wants me to order an OEM one, then I can, and then I can just install that later. Okay, and now what I'm doing is just pressure testing the carburetor. The needle has not moved around five PSI there. Brand new carburetor was already previously installed, but just to double check everything, I'll make sure that everything works properly. Okay, so I've got everything reinstalled onto the machine. Everything is assembled except for the little heat shrouds. I have the one that covers the muffler, but the other smaller one, I believe my customer left that at his place. So he had already started the disassembly process, but me being who I am, I label everything and I keep all my bolts organized. So when he goes to put everything back together, he'll have the right bolts. I did put a new RC12YC spark plug in it. I figured why not? Because the other one was kind of fouled because it was burning quite a bit of oil that was you know, being pumped back up through the cylinder head. You guys can see I got the dip stick out now and that's because I'm ready to put some oil into this thing. So I'm gonna be using 1.5 liters of 10W30. So 
So this thing runs good. The smoking went away because basically that was just burning off the oil in the muffler there. As far as this head repair goes, this thing's done and it's ready to go back to my customer. So that's it for today's video. This machine ended up running awesome and my customer used it for the rest of the 2018 season and said that everything worked fine. He was very pleased with how the machine ran. He actually mentioned that the machine ran better than it did when he got it, which is funny because that leads me to believe that uh, this machine has always had a slight intake valve leak. So again, when talking about Kohler's, I really don't recommend them as engines. Briggs and Stratton, Tecumseh's, Honda's, you really can't go wrong with them. But Kohler's, they always seem to have issues, whether it's leaking valves or, you know, this EGR emission stuff that they're running now. It's crazy how many things go wrong with these engines. But at the end of the day, we were able to get this machine running good and my customer is happy and that's all that matters. So if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week. Check the channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.